Harry's wife. Ardern. They're nothing to do with me. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Harry's wife believes that she belongs in the A-list stratosphere. She believes that she is at home amongst the elite, that she should be glad-handing the Obamas, that she should be enjoying tea on the terrace with the Clooney's, that she should be hanging out with Dr. Jill Biden, that relevant Democratic senators should be cozying up with her, that she should be regularly hobnobbing with the A-listers amongst Hollywood, Oprah, Gwyneth, etc., popping round for a chat about whatever. She believes that she is amongst all of the movers and the shakers around the world, whether it's politicians, diplomats, authors, broadcasters, presenters, actors and actresses, she believes that she belongs. The fact is that she is a D-list mattress actress from a cable show that can't dance, can't sing, her acting is mediocre, that she has nothing meaningful to tell the world, that she has no innate charisma, that she's not an entrepreneur, she's not an innovator, she's not a fantastic writer that can weave magical worlds that will transport people away. She is dull, bland, and, of course, industrial beige. And the consequence of all of that is that there is this gap between what she is and what her narcissism causes her to believe what she is. And she roundly believes that she should be amongst all of the elite. But the elite doesn't want her. Many members of that elite look at her and see her for what she is, a grasping nobody. So the Obamas, the suit individuals that they are, and of course with Barak's own narcissism propelling him, ensured that distance is kept between them. The various senators that she was wanting to hobnob with have probably not been returning the calls and have made it clear that they don't want anything to do with her. The Hollywood A-list has turned its back upon her. Witness, for instance, Christmas time. Each Christmas, one would expect that they'd be hosting huge parties with all of these people in the Montecicco area. But no, it's Christmas with Doria once again. The fact is, she believes that she belongs to the starstruck stratosphere, but she does not. And, as a consequence of her behaviours, and the fact that she is seen as something of a toxic individual that drags down projects and is not someone that you want to be associated with, that's why various politicians haven't returned the calls. That's why various initiatives haven't got anywhere. That's why when William and Kate meet the real royals of the Kennedy family, they're left with the cast-offs, including the short skirt wearing Kerry Kennedy. Harry and Harry's wife are not the star draw that she believes that they are. And therefore, in the circumstances, each time there is another member of the elite that is potentially involved with them, they tend to scurry to distance themselves from involvement with Harry's wife because they recognise it's not really a good look. There are those, of course, that continue to nail their colours to the Harry's wife's mast because she serves a purpose with regard to their own agendas, those within politics, wokedom and race. But they are few and far between. The vast majority of individuals think, not a chance do I want to be associated with this individual. And so it's the case with the Prime Minister of New Zealand. As we turn to the article at news.com.au from Nick Bond, which tells us Jacinda Ardern distances herself from Harry and Harry's wife in surprise statement. Ouch. One day after Netflix dropped the trailer for Harry and Harry's wife's new project, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has released an update of her own. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has released a statement appearing to distance herself from Prince Harry and Harry's wife days before her planned appearance in their Netflix docuseries. Netflix yesterday dropped the trailer for Harry and Harry's wife's next streaming project, Live to Lead, 
Released on December the 31st, the seven-part Netflix series will feature interviews from prominent leaders, including Ardern, the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, climate activist permanently angry Greta Thunberg, lawyer Gloria Steinem, and more. As some on social media pointed out, Bader Ginsburg's involvement suggests the project has been in the works for a while. She died more than two years ago, and I suspect they're not going to reanimate her corpse for the purposes of this programme. And in a new statement released to media, Ardern's office appeared to distance the New Zealand PM from the ex-royal couple, pointing out that her involvement in the project came back in March 2019, some three and a half years ago, almost a year before Harry and Harry's wife announced their intention to quit the royal family and was facilitated by the Nelson Mandela Foundation. In early March 2019, the Prime Minister was approached by the Mandela Foundation to participate in a project to develop accessible resources on key attributes of leadership targeted at aspiring young leaders around the world based off a one-hour interview. The statement began, saying they were advised the outputs would be printed and digital books, short films and audio books. In March 2021, the Nelson Mandela Foundation advised the Prime Minister's office they had secured an agreement with Netflix to broadcast the series of interviews, including the 2019 interview with the Prime Minister. It continued. In May this year, the Prime Minister's office was notified that the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex would introduce the series, noting this was nearly two and a half years after the interview had been recorded and permission for its use by the Mandela Foundation had already been provided. All communication throughout has been with the Foundation. There has been no communications with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex regarding the project. Ardern's statement comes as Harry and Harry's wife's Netflix part, six-part Netflix docuseries strains their relations with the royal family even further. Bombshells. In the documentary, a series include Harry's allegation that his, prince brother, that his brother Prince William had helped orchestrate a damaging leak about Harry's wife during her 2021 court case against Associated Newspapers. As the NZ Herald reports, given she is the serving Prime Minister of a Commonwealth country, Ardern would have been likely to turn down any involvement in a Harry's Wife and Harry project so as not to be seen taking a side in the increasingly ugly fight between the pair and the royal family. The fact that Jacinda Ardern has moved so quickly to distance herself from it tells you all you need to know about the diminished stock of Harry's wife. The fact is, she did this in relation to the Nelson Mandela Foundation and makes, wants to make it very clear that she had nothing at all to do with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And once it's become apparent that they're on board, she's distancing herself from it because she recognises that being associated with the gruesome twosome is not sensible. This, of course, is a blow to Harry's wife. The distancing of itself wounds because she's not being given any fuel and she's being signalled that she's not important. The press release, in effect, is challenge fuel because it's talking about them, but essentially saying we don't want to be involved with Harry or Harry's wife. And as you know, Harry is an extension of Harry's wife. Not good news for Harry's wife. It will, of course, result in ignition of fury and will cause her to have to assert control indirectly by complaining about this to whoever is listening. But it also demonstrates once again the diminished stock that she has, that people just don't want to be involved with her because of the way she behaves. And this is a Prime Minister of a country saying, uh uh, I didn't have anything to do with them. And essentially, if they had been involved, I wouldn't have been involved myself. It's a thumbs down again for Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.